Hello and welcome to another episode of Freedom Talks. So I am Debbie Lichter. It's so good to be here with you. And really what we're doing here today and every single day and every single time we meet and have a training or some kind of discussion, it really is committed to you being free from whatever is holding you back so that you can shine your light and light up others. Hey, Jenna. Hey, Ian. So good to see you. And so today, the way that we're going to be talking about that is around three keys to loving yourself. This is actually one of the biggest themes that I hear next to people coming to me saying, hey, Deb, I really want freedom around my relationship with food, or I really want freedom around these addictive patterns that are holding me back, or I want freedom from the sabotage. The number one thing that I hear from men and women alike is just this deeper desire to love yourself and to love yourself authentically. Because here's what I find so much is that this is such a big topic and I find that people are constantly trying to love themselves. Like we know that we're supposed to love ourselves no matter what. We know that we're supposed to just accept ourselves, whatever that means. And so we try and it's like, we, it's like we're trying to mind muscle this authentic experience of self-love. And that's just not how it works. And so what I want to do, good morning, sunshine. So what I want to do with you today is I want to talk about what we really do need to do so that we can get on board with that. And as a part of that, I'm going to speak about the three self-hate crimes that I see us committing to ourselves mm -hmm. and what to do instead around that stuff. And this topic is so near and dear to me because I, you know, I was, I was recently just sharing with the women who are in my Freedom Embodied Academy, you know, my, my whole life, I had this constant feeling that I wasn't enough of the right things. You know, I wasn't good enough for this, or I, I wasn't thin enough for that, or, you know, I wasn't smart enough for this. There was always like a not enoughness or there was a too muchness. Like I'm, I'm too emotional. I'm too loud. I'm too complicated. I'm too high maintenance. Or there was just this like, I'm not doing it right. Like I'm not, I'm just not the right kind. I'm not doing it right. I'm the person, I'm not cool enough or I'm not, I'm not funny enough or I'm not interesting enough or I'm not talented enough or, you know, all those things. And so if you have also spent a lifetime where you've been in one of those three buckets or all of those three buckets, then you probably are on the same page with me where it's like you, you know, your mind knows you've done enough inner work to know that you're supposed to really love you. But if you've got all of that noise going on, it's really, really hard. So what I'd love to hear from you, you can just post in the comments is if one of those three or if all of those three have been themes for you, like if you want to put like not enough or too much or not the right kind, just put that in the comments. I'd love to just hear from you to just see if we're on the same page with that because I hear this a lot from other people too. And, and as we do that, as you do that, I want to get into this first hate crime that I see as committing to ourselves. So this first hate crime is self-criticism. So self-criticism looks like a whole lot of different things. And when I'm speaking with folks, it's like I'm beating myself up or I am just feeling like I'm not enough or I feel wrong. Yeah, all of those three, right? All of those three, but a lot of too much. Absolutely. And so the self-criticism, I mean, I was speaking with a woman um, the other day and she you know, she, she admitted, I, yeah, I have suicidal thoughts and I have moments of just hating myself so much. And so it can absolutely go there. The self-criticism can absolutely go there. And it can also just be that, that low grade judgment that's going on that, like that ticker tape of judgment that's happening where it's like, you're living your life, but then you have this like peanut gallery in your mind the whole time. that's judging every little thing, analyzing every little thing. And it's really, really hard to be present with all of that. And you know, here's, here's where I find so many people getting really stuck because if you think about like self-criticism is one of those things where 
what, and I used to be like this quite a lot. I remember really when I was really, really deep in my food addiction, I was so intolerant of my appetite that was out of control that I just couldn't, I couldn't, once I started, I couldn't stop. And I had this, this voracious appetite and I felt so guilty. I felt like such a pig about it that I, I thought, well, then what I need to do is I need to be really strict and mean to myself in my head to keep myself in line. Because if I'm too nice to myself, if I'm too accepting of myself, then I'm just going to like, then the bottom's going to fall out. Then I'm just going to, you know, then I'm just going to go absolutely out of control. And so it was my way to try to keep control. It's my way to try to keep myself um, within like, within the lines by being like a, just a, like this horrible, having this horrible taskmaster inside of my head. I mean, I was awful to myself and I would say really, really mean things to myself and, you know, the kinds of things that you would never say to somebody else. And if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. There's the stuff that you would never say to anybody else. And yet somehow you can say these things to yourself. And so, you know, there was this way that I thought that the level of intolerance that I had for certain behaviors or certain aspects of myself was actually keeping me in line and it was something that I was holding on to that if I didn't hold on to I don't even know what would have happened and that's where I see a lot of people getting stuck I was speaking with a woman the other day and, and she said I don't want to accept I don't want to love I don't want to tolerate this because if I do then that means that I'm like willing to have it for the rest of my life and I don't and I don't, and I don't want this. I want to get rid of it. I want to be done with this. I want to be free of this. I want to be over this. And so what do we do? And then the next thing that I see folks doing, yeah, all of the above, right? I'm getting a lot of all of the above. The next thing that I see folks doing is then okay, no, I know I know I'm supposed to accept myself. I know I'm supposed to accept myself. So then we go into trying to mind muscle acceptance. But acceptance is one of those very loaded terms where what I find oftentimes is that we're trying to accept something so that we can change or fix it. If I just accept it, will it go away? You know, and, and so even that can have us be really up in our heads and not actually in the experience. And in fact, it can create more judgment because your inability to actually authentically accept where you're at creates its own layer of judgment. So then we have the judgment that we have about ourselves, then we have the judgment about having judgment about ourselves, <clears throat> and it just creates all these layers. So yeah, I feel like that's bringing some stuff up for people because I can feel it in my throat. <laughs> so what do we do instead? If, if, if we can't superimpose acceptance on ourselves, and if the self-criticism is actually holding us hostage from the very freedom that we want, then what do we do instead? Well, so this is where we need to try a new tool. And the new tool, and I was just sharing this with my ladies in the Freedom Embodied Academy this week, is to be honest. There's a level of honesty that we're actually missing. It is, a, is an act of self-love to be honest with yourself. Now, here's the thing that can be challenging about honesty, is that we think that all the self-criticism and all the judgment and all the blame and all the make wrong is being honest with ourselves. And frankly, when we create all those stories, we feel so badly about ourselves that the, the idea of being honest with ourselves makes us think, well, I don't want to feel even worse about myself. So I don't want to go there. But the thing is, is that there's a part of us that is crying out for us to just get real with where we are, for us to be able to clear the distraction, clear the denial, and just be able to get real with what is so right now. And so I invite you, if you're somebody who's gotten really distracted and you're all over the place or you have all the self-criticism going on, I invite you in a quiet moment today to just pause, take a breath, go within, and just ask yourself, ask that inner part of yourself, what do I need to get honest about? And I promise you, it will start talking. And, and here's the thing, that when it does start talking, don't make meaning out of it. Don't make judgment out of it. Let it be this like wisdom information that's actually pulling up to the surface the things that you are really ready to look at at a deeper level. 
And if you're not sure, like, okay, now what do I do with this? I don't know what to do with now. Now I'm, I've gotten honest. What do I do with this? If you need some support around that, of course, you know, you can always reach out to me. You can book a clarity call with me. If you just go to um, get support dot today, I can support you with that. And you can also just feel into what that next action is for you. So, you know, I really, really encourage you to do that. But honesty becomes, it becomes a freedom foundation for us when we can just step into that. And there's something that is deeply um, congruent about honesty. So everything that we're talking about today is all along the path of what is going to allow you to come into a deeper level of congruence. Because what I've discovered is that the path of truly authentically loving yourself is the path of coming into full congruence. So each of these tools are actually tools that I'm pulling out of the congruence code, um, which is the system that I teach, and sharing them with you here so that you actually have some tangible tools that you can walk away with. And all these little things are going to support you in just coming into a deeper, more authentic experience of self-love. So the first thing that we have is honesty, and it's a really foundational thing, and, and as part of that honesty um, framework is to stop making yourself wrong. There's no wrong make. So we want to just, like, honesty and then embrace everything that you hear. Embrace the fullness of the experience right now. That is a fabulous, fabulous place to just start in this conversation of self-love. Okay, so that's number one. So number two, this is so huge. This, this hate crime is so, so big. This is the hate crime of self-betrayal. So self-betrayal, if, if guilt is the feeling that comes up when we are in a pattern of um, self-criticism, the, the feeling that comes up when we are in a pattern of self-betrayal is rage, absolute rage. I actually had this recently. I was, um, eh, so good to see you. Um, I was in a conversation with my partner and we were talking about something and it didn't even occur to me that, the, that we were talking about something around my business. And it didn't, you know, we were in a, in, in a normal conversation, but I woke up in the wee hours the next morning with a rage that like, like completely took over my entire body. I was livid, my heart was pounding. And at first I thought I was angry at him, you know? And I, but, I, but I know that when there's that kind of visceral rage, that's not a kind of rage that we actually have at other people. That, th that kind of visceral rage is a rage that we have at ourselves because we have betrayed our own truth. It's fascinating. But just notice it. And if you, if you think you might understand what I, what I mean, just, uh, just put in the comments, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I gotcha, <laughs> gotcha on that one. Um, because, so, so self-betrayal is when you know something deep down, you feel it, like you can feel it at a visceral level. And then you don't follow that guidance or you don't follow your gut or, you know, you, you somehow let um, another person's opinion or an outside influence override what you know to be true for yourself. Or sometimes it's not an outside influence. Sometimes it's your head. Sometimes there's that, that gut feeling of what you know. It's like, you know you need to leave this job. You know you need to leave the relationship. You know that you need to you know, fill in the blank. You know this is a part that is so true for you. you know? and, and yet, there's maybe some doubt or some insecurity or some you know, just second guessing that has us go, well, maybe I don't know, or maybe that's not it, or, you know, like, got to leave the job, but I can't leave the job because that's my security blanket. And so, you know, we kind of like, we make these excuses or whatever it is, and we don't end up following that gut. And if you've been in a situation where you haven't followed your gut, yes, woo, yes, I'm getting all this stuff. If you have been in a situation where you have not followed your gut and you know that feeling of that rage and that, 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 
frustration and that, oh my gosh, I knew it. Why didn't I do that? Like that stuff where we're kicking ourselves. It is very, very difficult to love yourself when you are self-betraying because you know at the deepest level that you are not honoring you. There's an inner girl or an inner boy inside of you that's like, don't tell me that you're going to do another self-love meditation. I don't want to hear it because you're not honoring my truth at the deepest level. So they're like, uh-uh, I'm not buying it, you know, and we just push that away. There's a part of you that's just like, no. And so what do we do instead? Well, what we have to do instead is that we have got to really, really listen to our guts. We've got to listen. So what ended up happening for me was that when I had that, I mean, it literally just took over my whole body. And I was instantly able to get to, because at first, again, I was like, ah, I'm so mad at him. And then I was like, no, this rage is about me. And so then I was able to look at, okay, how have I been self-betraying? So that's the question I want you to ask yourself. How have I been self-betraying? And again, there is a inner voice that knows the answer to that. How have I been self-betraying? Maybe you want to ask that as it, as it relates to a particular relationship that you have. Maybe you want to ask that as it just relates to life in general. Maybe you want to ask as it relates to your relationship with your health or your, or your work relationship. But what I asked that and immediately I got the answer that there was something that I didn't present, something that I really needed to stand in as we were speaking about my business and I, I allowed for his expertise in this area to override what felt true inside and I said, oh, no, no, no. And so I did. I reached out and I said, hey, I am feeling really icky inside because I was self-betraying last night and here's what I know to be true. I know this is true and I know this is true and I feel it was so much conviction inside of me that I honor you and I know you were trying to help me and be supportive and this has to be factored in because I know this to be true with every fiber of my being. And of course I have a really loving accepting partner who said thank you so much for sharing that with me and it was, you know, we had a beautiful um, connection around all of that. But as soon as I honored that part, as soon as I trusted my gut and, and spoke into it, the, the rage dissipated. It just went away. And I felt this boost of confidence. I felt this boost of inner love because it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, whoa, I just did something congruent. I just did something congruent for myself. And it, again, every time you do something congruent, it will feel like an act of self-love. And this is how we build up this authentic experience of self-love. So here we've started. We started with a foundational thing of getting honest, not making yourself wrong, embracing where you're at. This is so, so big. And then we've moved into trusting your gut. We've kind of moved that. So you can see how we're moving from the bottom up instead of what we do normally is from the top down, right? From our head saying, I've got to love myself. I'm supposed to accept myself. And then we try to like superimpose that. We try to mind muscle that into our authentic experience. It doesn't work. The only way to do it is to authentically build up from the bottom. So that's what we're doing here. So what is the next thing that we do? What's the next hate crime that we are committing against ourselves? The next hate crime. Hey, Julie, so glad that you're here with us. The next hate crime that we commit against ourselves is the hate crime of self-censoring. Self-censoring. So self-censoring is all, everything from um, withholding, from being inauthentic, from putting on a happy face, from pretending, from dumbing yourself down, from going with the flow, from not speaking up, from stuffing your feelings. I mean, can we just get a little, like, if you relate to self-censoring, can you just put self-censoring in the comments so we can just see if that is a theme that is up for you guys and gals today? Because this is a great big, huge one that I see. And this actually, all of these, every single one of the things that we're talking about today is actually one of the things that drives us towards addictions. 
because all of the ways that we are committing hate crimes against ourselves, it creates internal incongruence and internal incongruence creates a discomfort inside of us. It creates that, like I said, that ickiness inside of us, that dis-ease inside of us. And then what we do from that place is we are driven towards a sense of ease and comfort. And that's what, where, where addictions happen. Addictions are just whatever we're doing to try and numb or distract ourselves from that underlying discomfort or dis-ease. So, so that's, that's, what that, that's how that shows up. And self-censoring, because when you think about that, the self-censor is happening here at the throat, right? So I'm, I'm not speaking up, I'm shutting down, I'm closing off, I'm actually bottlenecking this, this place in my, in my body physiologically. And your throat is actually your truth center. It's your energetic truth center. And so when you shut this down, when you block this, when you stuff down feelings or when, when you hold or when you act inauthentically. So inauthentically means that I'm having an experience on the inside and then I'm acting differently on the outside. So it just doesn't match. It doesn't match up. And whenever we're doing any of those things, it literally is traumatizing to our truth center. And so it's not surprise that when we traumatize our truth center, this leads to drinking too much, eating too much, um, you know, either like having that, like that verbal diarrhea where we're over explaining or over, you know, trying to over justify ourselves, feeling misunderstood all the time. That was me. I used to go horse trying to be understood by others and explain myself. So we we're like, Bleh, like just try and get it all out or we completely shut it down, pain in the throat right? You know, like all this stuff happens when, when we are in, in a self-censoring pattern. And so with self-censoring, this is such a big thing. Hey, Catherine, it's so good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. I know we've got a lot of folks who are relating to this word. This is a really, really big one. Self-censoring is, again, is how, so if, if self-betrayal is what you're doing to yourself, um, of, of, you know, not honoring your gut and the self-criticism is you not fully embracing the, f the fullness of you. You making yourself wrong or too much, not the right kind. And you're constantly keeping yourself, um, you know, you're holding yourself apart from, from parts of you. The self-censor is when we then hold ourselves apart from the world around us. And when you're self-censoring, there's a d again, there's a deep, wise, true, congruent, authentic part of you that when that part gets shut down, when that part knows that you are not honoring it, you cannot feel self-love. Imagine that. So self-love, let's say self-love is coming, is, 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 is generating from our heart. Okay. But now if you're not trusting your gut and you've just shut down your throat, then, then it's going to completely weigh heavy on this area. You're not going to be able to get anywhere with here. You're not going to be able to experience all of that love throughout your whole body. You're like, you're siphoning it off. You're shutting it down. You're clamping it down. So if anybody, as we're talking about this right now, because I can feel that some of you are actually feeling some tension in your throat right now. If you're feeling tension in your throat as we're talking about this, this is all a part of it. Because there's this deep, the truth center is like, yeah, hello, I have not been heard. I have not been heard. I have not been honored. So, so as part of, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm teaching the congruence code in the Freedom Embodied Academy, um, and we're, we're talking about this truth center, one of the themes that we weave into here is the theme of integrity and honor. And I want to be really clear when I talk about integrity, because when we talk about integrity, it's oftentimes we're thinking about integrity is doing the right thing, doing the thing that my mind thinks I'm supposed to do. That's being an integrity or doing the thing that society or others deem as being the right thing to do, the proper thing to do. And I'm going to be in integrity with that. But integrity is actually a deep, it's like, can I be in, integrous with 
the authentic truth that's bubbling up inside me? Can I honor that so deeply that even if that means that whatever I'm going to speak out might disappoint somebody else, might let somebody else down, or might not be what somebody else wants to hear, can my commitment to the deepest truth, can I be so true to that that I'm going to speak that without trying to manage the other person's experience. Now there's a caveat to that. We can't go from, we can't go from, I've got this feeling in my gut into I've got to speak this to, out to you because that's because we're bypassing the heart. Okay. And when we do that, then that's when it's like, I just got to get this off my chest. You better hear this. I've got to speak my mind to you. You just got to hear this, you know, because this is what you need to hear right now. And that's, that's not, that's not honoring of you. That's not honoring of the other person. That's not any of that stuff. What we need to do is we need to get free of the things that are weighing heavy on us so that we can actually have an authentic experience of compassion for ourselves and compassion for others. And then when we get to speak, we're speaking through the lens of our self-compassion. That is how we can actually self-honor. So integrity and honor are when you're actually voicing from a deep, true place with inside of you and you're sharing that into the world and you are releasing the attachment to how that is received or perceived and you're doing it because to not do it is actually an act of, um, it's a hate crime against yourself. So a perfect example of that is how I, I said that um, I, I reached out to my partner in the morning and I said, I, I expressed oh my gosh, I realized that I was self-betraying and it felt so icky inside and this is what I know to be true for myself. And I shared that and by sharing that, I got out of any of that, that, that block that was going on here. It came out through a congruent channel and I also wasn't really attaching to how he was going to receive it on the other side. I just put it out there. And, you know, like, because I wasn't blaming him or making him wrong, but I was just sharing with him my authentic experience, it actually brought us closer into deeper levels of connection. And so these are the ways that we, we live life in a way that has us loving on ourselves. And so what I was just sharing with the ladies in our call this past week was that Self-love is the same, works the same way as freedom, where it's not something that, that you are consciously deciding to do in each moment, or at least this is my experience. It's, it's when you are making these congruent actions, you're taking these congruent steps that you have, you realize that you start to, to really react and respond in your life in a way that is honoring of yourself, that is loving of yourself. And you realize, oh my gosh, this is an act of self-love. I must love myself because I just totally took care of myself in this moment. Wow, that is so, so amazing. And so this is how that works. This is how that shows up. And in, in so when we're talking about self-censoring, you know, if if with self-betrayal, we get the feeling of rage. With self-censoring, we can get the feeling of shame or make wrong. You know, we're, we're holding back because something that we might say or do is going to be the wrong thing out there in the world. And so we hold back and we hold stuff it down. And, and that creates all of that discomfort and dis-ease and all that kind of stuff. And so what you want to do instead is that you want to voice your truth. You want to voice your truth. And I'm, and I'm using my hands to go in this direction because again, we've been starting with the foundation, we got to the core, and now we're talking about what you do, how you take that through your throat. It's a very authentic, organic, embodied experience that happens through your channel of truth. And as you do that, you again you take this this you you start to live congruently in your life you actually embody the experience of living with integrity and honor and all of that has you feeling more love for yourself 
So one of the ways that I really, really see this working for people, and this is like, and it brings up our stuff, right? It's like really, it's scary, but um, there is a way that if when you take congruent, bold action, and congruent, bold action for you might be um, speaking your truth to somebody in in that in that way that we just that we just mentioned. It might be voicing that. It might be in the next business meeting speaking up and saying, hey, you know what? I actually have, I can see your point around that, but I actually have a different opinion and I love to share that. You know, that that you actually speak into the space. Or, hey, you know what? I'm realizing that there's been a way that I've been showing up in this relationship that, you know, isn't the most loving thing to do for myself and for you. And I really would love to, I'd love to just shift some things in our dynamic that allows us to actually have a more authentic, loving relationship. And I'm wondering if you would be open to that. I mean, that is bold. That's really, really bold. And, and yet it's moving in the direction with somebody, bringing somebody on the same team with you and moving in the direction of more congruence, more authenticity, and even just you practicing speaking up in that way is like such an act of self-love. So if I'm sharing things for you that you're like, yeah, that's great. I, I so don't see myself doing that or I'm scared to do that or I don't even know how to do that. Um, then again, you know, you know, I'm always here for you. You know, you can always set up some time with me. You can set up a clarity call with me. Um, some of you are already in my Freedom Embodied Academy, so we can just talk about that on our next call. Um, but if you're not and you want some support around, hey, how do I, this is all great information, but how do I actually start living and acting from that more congruent place? You know, I, I want to be more honest. I want to stop self-betraying. I want to trust my gut, but I've got all this stuff that's blocking me from that. I want to be more authentic. I want to speak up. I want to stop self-censoring, but I need support around that. If you if you are in that conversation, you're wanting some support, then please just book a, book a clarity call with me. Just go to getsupport.today. I'll leave the, uh, the link in the comments. And let's just spend 15 minutes together. I, I would love to support you with this because this is my commitment to you, is to help you to live free from all the things that are blocking you and holding you back so that you can shine your light and you can help the people that you're here to help. You can light up others. And so any way that I can serve you in that, it would be my absolute honor. So what I'd love to do before we wrap up to, for today's training is I'd love to hear what the biggest takeaway was for you and which of the three self-hating acts are you really committed to this week taking on and doing something different. And then I would love to know, please report back and let us know how that was, what that was. If you spent some time saying, you know, what do I need to get honest about? And then you got all this honesty, you know, you can either share what that was or you can just share about your experience about having that and what that felt like and how, how empowering it felt to actually just get real and to stop distracting yourself from all that. If you relate to the self-betrayal and you just know that you really, really want to take on this week, that you want to trust your gut, you want to listen to your gut, and you want to ask yourself, where have I been self-betraying? Maybe you want to share the areas that you feel like you've been self-betraying, or you want to share about your experience about doing it differently, trusting your gut and doing it differently. Or maybe you want to share about your experience of voicing your truth, about voicing your truth and not self-censoring, the hate crime of self-censoring that has us live in so much shame and so much blockage because we're not being authentically ourselves. And so you'd love to share about that. Whatever you want to share about, please do report back. Would absolutely love that. And again, it is such an honor to be here with you. If you enjoyed this, please do share it. And definitely stay tuned and join us next week. We will be doing a whole new live training. And I look forward to being there with you. Bye for now. Mwah.